Bruce Buffett, welcome and thank you for your time uh, to come on here. It's for me and Mike. We're a little bit fanboy here. We're we're, we're going to try and hold it together. People, I think everybody is, aren't they? We are, uh, Bruce. You you've been with the UFC since I was it UFC eight with the prelims, and you're still here now, rocking out stadiums with your announcing. You yourself address being an announcer as you t- each time you do it, you try to perform better each time. Do you feel that when you're doing this one in Melbourne coming up shortly? You've got to put on probably possibly your best performance because it's going to be the biggest, maybe the biggest, you know, sellout the UFC's ever had. Well, you know, Melbourne's going to be hopefully seventy thousand screaming Aussie fans and whoever flies into the country for that show. And thanks for all the kind words, guys. I, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, my first UFC I attended was UFC six. The first one I announced the prelims. You're right, is uh, UFC eight in Puerto Rico, where I was actually managing my fighter Scott the Pitbull Ferrazzo, which was the way I got down there. Uh, I convinced the owner to let me announce the prelims to show him what I got, and then just kept fighting for the job after that. But February 16th will be 20 years for me in the octagon. That's 2016. 20 years I've been announcing. I don't expect to go watch. I don't expect to retire. I expect to enjoy the uh, celebration of 20 years of doing what I love and I'm so passionate about. And when it comes to Melbourne, you know, every show for me is like my first show. I go out there, and I'm only as good as the show I'm doing right now. I, I'm, you're never going to hear me sit around the fireplace, well, when I was at UFC 53, or I did the 360 at 100, you know, I'm just not that kind of guy. It's like I'm as good as I'm good as, a good, as good as I am today. So when I feel that energy in Melbourne and everything going on, it's going to be it's going to be awesome. I can't tell you what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to promise anything crazy like a 360 or anything like that. What I will promise you is that I'll just be lightning on for all the fans and just try to create as much excitement as possible remember i'm not a gymnast i'm a performer i'm an announcer <laughs> <laughs> and yeah you've spoken before about you like the, the performing you you studied it and have you not tried to maybe think about doing a bit of acting or anything like that as a, a side venture because you know you, you've mentioned it in the past is that still not something you want to try out as far as what again as far as what like maybe TV, something like that, trying to maybe venture into kind of perform, like acting in some way? Oh, yeah. No, I'm working on all that now. You know, I've appeared in about 12 movies and I've co-starred in, on, and, or acted in a number of TV shows. But they're all little tests. Right now, one trick you talk about in Hollywood, one thing you do is you never talk about anything until it's signed and being filmed. But I have uh, projects that are on the table right now, which are non-UFC projects. So I'm constantly expanding the branding of my you know my uh, trademark my image my career and tv and film is definitely in the future i've got some very exciting things happening i just can't talk about it right now no that's great that there is something in the you know outside of the kind of octagon so to speak it's quite exciting to hear bruce yeah. that you've got this coming up um you've got this um rare rare sort of um ability that when somebody sees your face they link you automatically with the UFC now there's only a, f- a few people where you see them and straight away you, you link them to something and I, you know it's almost like you, you, you're one of the faces of the UFC the day that well I just go yeah ahead. go on sorry Bruce no finish finish oh I was going to say the day that doesn't happen anymore I, I don't know I'm going to take that <laughs> it's because I'll always link you to the UFC and it's one of those hard things like you can't imagine somebody else taking over that forever. You know, I know you don't do every single one anymore, but you still do them. And I can't imagine a day that, I mean, it has to happen, like life goes well, on, but I can't, I can't imagine dealing with that one, you know. It's a, it's a natural progression of life. You know, the thing is, is that I've missed about maybe... 16 or 17 shows in 20 years all of which were in the last two to three years when they started doing the fight pass shows and then all of a sudden then they started calling me in for the fight pass shows you know and and bringing me back to europe because uh you know the fans or whatever were giving response and you know they it's part of being part of the brand is being one of the consistent faces of the ufc which i take tremendous pride in and and i'm very passionate about i would do every show if i'm not working on a weekend I'm going to be working somewhere else. And if I'm not working somewhere, you know, non-MMA, of course, and if I'm, if I'm not working somewhere else, then I'm going to be home. And it's like, why am I not there? You know, but the bottom line is like the Fight Pass shows. These are not majorly televised shows. They're not the biggest shows. It costs, you know, a good amount of change to bring me over to Europe. But I did come over for a couple. I'm coming over for more. Uh, 
this next year and in Asia I'm doing Fight Pass shows so I try to do all the shows that I can and, and they know that I will do it they call me and say Bruce get on a plane I'm on the plane but um, mine is not to reason why mine is but to do or die and the great words of your uh, country hero, hero and fellow countryman uh, Rudyard Kipling um, the bottom line is that I'm a good soldier you know but I will fight every battle and I can't imagine uh, not being in the octagon as as strange that may be for you when and if that day happens and it will happen uh it'll be strange for me too but you know it's i'm good for another 10 plus years boys don't worry <laughs> good <laughs> that's good i'll make sure i am as well yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay <laughs> now, we'll, we'll just have to make sure they get you on a plane uh, to london around february time around february yeah that'd be, that'd be awesome yeah yeah is that is that when the o2 arena is supposed to happen yeah, yeah end, of, uh, end of feb tw- tw- 27th uh do you know what UFC they're calling that? I don't even have my schedule yet. Is that a uh, fight pass show? Um, or a um, it might happen? be. No, because it's in the UK, it'll be a fight pass one. I, I would, yeah, I would think so. so, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd think so as well. But Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed, anyway, folks and people in the UK get to see Bruce again. Yeah. Now, Bruce, we, we've had guests on, uh, like Campbell McLaren, you know, we've we've spoke with him about the origins of the UFC. We've had Dan Severn on and Gary Goodridge, because we like to get people who have been a part of the UFC and MMA as a whole, really, from like kind Br- of the... Bricks and mortar. Yeah, yeah, the kind of people who've formed the foundations. For you, we, we want to speak a little bit about the past, and one particular moment we thought we'd like to ask you about was it was really the the Stefan Bonner Forrest Griffin tough finale fight you announced the fight you watched watch the fight during each round you know Dana White was talking about how it exploded on his phone and and, and that was the t- that was a turning point in the UFC for you just sitting there watching the fight did you realize what was going on at the time did you even think to yourself this this is a turning call a turning point this is a pivotal moment well, we all knew how important that night was. It was basically, in, in my mind, it was a make-or-break night because they were $44 million in the hole before they started that uh, Ultimate Fighter series, which they rolled their own money on to make happen. And, you know, that's called a heck of a dice roll if you play craps. Yeah. And here we had the show that led up to that final fight. And as soon as that fight got into the first round and out of the first round, I realized something very special was happening. We were watching two warriors giving everything they could And a screenwriter could not have written a script better for a movie than how that night panned out. When we had something like 12.5 million people tuning in at a peak or a steady 8 plus million, whatever it was, watching, and immediately put us over the edge. And as I always like to say, uh, we made Spike TV and Spike TV made us. Granted, we're no longer there, but that chemistry, that synergy that was happening for years was tremendously beneficial to both of us, you know, beating the UFC and to Spike. And then it carried on from there, and you know, then just uh, that was a catapult. That was a, a shot out of the cannon. That was a change in the history and the business uh, environment and landscape of the UFC. And then, thank God, Dana and Lorenzo and Frank Fertitta are so brilliant in what they do, and they hopped on it. They made the best of it, and here we are today. And it was a, a huge moment, and it's just great to get yeah. talk to people who were there as well, got to experience not just obviously Dana talks about it all the time. So it's nice to see. Uh, hear other people's views and kind of experience that weren't obviously you know Dana etc but Bruce you, you're an announcer it's something that not everyone gets a chance to be able to do being an announcer it's a very it's a very particular skill set really you have to have for people out there who maybe are starting off they've just maybe starting off to do a bit of announcing or they may be looking to adventure into you know trying to be an announcer themselves could, could you maybe give advice or, or give pointers to people who are looking to maybe try this kind of roll out what maybe what they need to learn or preparations or good little tips for people well you know I get written uh, to by a number of announcers from around the world and I always you know try to answer everyone as long as they're you know respectful which they are um, the bottom line is is that it's not it's it's not rocket science it's not an easy job it looks easy okay and when I say it's not an easy job there's a lot involved a lot of people think you just read you know, words on cards, and you go out and you hold a microphone. Perception is reality, and that's all fine. Most people are scared to death to stand up and talk in front of a group of people, whether it's a classroom of 30 kids or whether it's an audience of 15,000. So once you gain that confidence and you feel like you want to make that step, the big thing is is to start strictly in your geographical area. You have no resume. You have no experience. Nobody's going to pay you to, to fly you to an event because you look good or maybe you look in a tuxedo or you know their best friend or whatever maybe that would happen the bottom line is you got to prove yourself so try and get out there look in the local schools and the gyms 
um, whether I don't care if it's a football field, whatever, get out and get experience talking on a microphone and start building a resume. And in the beginning, if you get a couple jobs or you work for free, well, fine, you know, but don't always work for free because then people won't pay you. So establish yourself, establish a resume, handle yourself with class, dress appropriately for the occasion, and uh, stand out. And basically just think of yourself as the ringleader. You know, you're the one going out there to set the epitone and the tone of the event at hand. That's where the ring announcer comes in very handy. They, they have to set the excitement uh, aside from whatever production quality is happening at that time to bring the audience into the event and as well as enhance the fighters even beyond where they're already enhanced walking into the cage or the ring in respect to announcing a fight. But you don't always have to announce fights. There's other events you can announce too. Just get your experience and do it within 100 miles geographically of where you live and then start building out from there. Create a nucleus and build out from there. That's some great advice for anyone starting out. It's, it's you know, I think it's very important. We had the, uh, a gentleman on, Luke Thomas, who's a, report, a journalist. We asked him to give advice. We, we like to get people who have experience in the field to offer maybe people beginning. I think it's key because some people maybe don't know where to go or where to look. Or well, sometimes there's that little thing they're missing, yeah. you know, and it that can little be, piece of the puzzle. And there's one thing you say that could change it all for them and they could just penny drops and then they can go on their way. Uh, Bruce, if, like you said, people used to get announcers who message you to ask you questions, how do you, how can people contact you? For example, if they're looking for a bit of advice in that way, is there do you have, you know what's your maybe social network and stuff that people can jump onto? Well, the thing is on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, I've got you know tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of followers. So I, I I will tell everybody right now that don't look to me to answer anything sent to me through there because I may not see it. Yeah. Right. Um, the best way to get a hold of me, whether it's for personalized uh, recordings for weddings and birthdays and, you know, all the stuff that I do that a lot of fans, you know, write me for and pay me for, you just go to brucebuffer.com, B-R-U-C-E, buffer.com. I try to answer every email, um, but again, I get a lot of emails, so it could take a while. So the, the bottom line is for, for business, knowing where I'm at, knowing what's happening, strictly just go to brucebuffer.com. There you go. Jump on, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to. If if you're looking in the field of announcing, maybe you want to get some advice. Like he said, we all know how busy Bruce is, and he's yeah, don't, not don't have me don't, don't have me answering 300 uh, want to be announcer fans from the UK. I'll never get I'll never get to all of them. Trust <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and folks, don't leave it till the last minute. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. You, you do get a bit busy, busy, Bruce. I mean, the, the air miles you must clock up. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I bet everything's free. <laughs> I am I am twenty four seven guys. Remember, you know me from what I do in the UFC. Yeah. There's a lot more going on in my life. Exactly. Trust me. Exactly. <laughs> and Bruce, you've also got a, a side venture, which is you do your own podcast, and um, which I think is fantastic because you you speak to, for example, you had Brian Stan just recently, and you weren't talking about necessarily just about Brian Stan's career. You talked about you know America and the morality and everything, and you could get you had a. Big John McCarthy on recently about the gun crime, kind of the, the kind of gun legislation in America. You talk about kind of really good policies on the podcast, which is fantastic. How can people tune into that, or where do they go to listen to it? Well, you know, I'm really happy about the international following I have on my podcast. My podcast is not an MMA podcast. We talk UFC and MMA, mm. of course, but we're we're lifestyles. So yeah. I have movie stars, TV stars like Stephen Moyer from True Blood. Uh, who's English, of course, and then um, uh, go on to, you know, wrestlers such as Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, Goldberg, uh, great poker players like Phil Helmuth, you know, to almost every mixed martial arts star you can think of. And when I have shows with John McCarthy or like I had with Brian Stan, I mean, we could have sat and talked to Brian Stan about UFC for the whole, you know, show, but Mm. that was not the reason. We have an issue here in America that I'm very big on, and I rant and rave on the show all the time about my personal viewpoints and what's going on in, in our lives. And we do have a serious issue here, which is the decaying morality of our society in America. And I know this is happening elsewhere, too, but I was just focusing on because recent stories took place in America. And that's what Brian and I were going over, along with my co-host, TJ DeSantis. So if you're going to tune in, it's time. Be prepared to hear, like I always say at the top of the show, we talk about what you think about, but you may be afraid to talk about Mm -hmm. in the group that you're in. I even have a sex and relationship show once a month, which is strictly devoted to sex and relationships. And people write in emails that are very explicit at times in their questions. But we're all adults here. I'm not Dr. Drew. I don't, I don't, you know, pretend to be a doctor. I have a lot of experience in my life, as anybody my age would, hopefully. And uh, the fans of, I, I guess I had the somewhat of an image to the fans, and they always thought it'd be cool to call, you know, write me for dating advice. 
which turned into relationship advice, which turned into marriage advice, which turned into all the stuff. That show's a lot of fun. And I'll, I've got a beautiful co-host, uh, Sammy Phillips, who's an ex-penthouse playmate and playboy, and, and uh, she's called a sexpert. And then we'll have guests on. And they could be a popular porno star to just a popular person that wants to talk sex and relationships. But I tell everybody, if you're under 18, ask your parents before you listen to that show. <laughs> it, it, it sounds tough. <laughs> it does. It does sound like a tough job, that, Bruce. And also, uh, for folks who don't know it's out, your, your book's been out a little while now. Uh, can people go on Amazon, I assume, to get your book? Yeah, go on Amazon there in the UK. You can get the book there. Um, the, it's sold out in all the stores, but still actively selling on uh, Amazon. That's what very I proud do. of that. Very, very proud of the book. That book is not just my book viewpoint all of the UFC it's a story of my life it's a relationship story between mother and son father and son and uh, as most people say if you read the reviews uh, they laugh they cry and uh, you know it's just very touching it's it's a very passionate effort on my part to write that book it, and Bruce I was about to say the book itself yeah it's not what you think it is it's not Bruce just talking about fights that you watch and that's what's so beautiful about it and, and I think if you haven't got it ladies and gentlemen jump on to like you say Amazon and, and get hold of it and have a read and get to understand Bruce a lot more than yeah opens his turns to his life it does and, and it's, it's a fascinating read but a fascinating man himself uh, Bruce thank you very much for coming on before you go like I say if you don't mind doing the klaxon last 10 seconds of the round it's, the, it's an important time are you ready for this? Yeah, I feel like the Kraken's going to come out of the water here. <laughs> yeah, it probably will. <laughs> okay, not, not too bad. No, here we go. We'll, we'll start off. We'll start off gentle. We've got cars or motorcycles. Cars. Family Guy or Simpsons. Family Guy. Movie or books. Movie. One eighty or three sixty. Three sixty. Jason Bourne or James Bond. James Bond. Texas Hold'em or strip poker. Depends who I'm with. But let's, go with let's, let's go with Texas Hold'em. <laughs> Good answer. Okay. Uh, quick finish or five round war? Am I fighting or watching? W or watching. <laughs> you could be watching. Okay. If I was fighting, I'd go quick finish, but let's go five round war. <laughs> uh, Batman or Superman? Batman. Love oh. Batman. Love Superman too, but Batman's, Batman's the king. I agree. Uh, okay. And then Frank Fatita or Frank Sinatra? Oh man, you gotta hit me with that one. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Frank, I love you. You know I love you. Frank Sinatra, love you too. Frank uh, Fertitta, we break bread when I see you. Let's go, Frank Fertitta. Uh, okay, and last one is Jim Miller or Pat Ely. <laughs> Uh, may the best man win. <laughs> Whoever that may be. Whoever that may be. <laughs> Whoever that may be. I'll figure it out when I get in there. <laughs> Bruce, once again, thank you for your time. Have a, have a great adventure in Australia when you go out there shortly. Obviously, you've got UFC coming up uh, this weekend. Uh, there's the Brazil one. Are you, go are you going to Brazil, are you? Yeah, you know, this weekend's crazy. Let me lay out November for you, okay? I leave for Brazil Thursday night. I get back on Monday. I leave for uh, Melbourne, Australia on Wednesday. I get back on Sunday or Monday. Then I leave for Seoul, Korea on yep. Thursday of the next week. Get back on Monday or Sunday, I forget. And then I go to Monterey, Mexico. Two hours after the Monterey, Mexico show, I've got to hop a plane in Mexico to Miami, Florida, where I'll land and there'll be a police escort waiting for me to race me to the Homestead Motor Speedway track uh, for NASCAR. That's the big race here in America. Uh, it's the final NASCAR race of the season, and I will be live on stage in front of a couple hundred thousand people and millions of people live on NBC TV announcing the final 11 drivers competing in the race. Makes and then you, I come home. That's my November. I was going to say, it make, makes you wonder if your plane ever lands. <laughs> <laughs> Just parachute out. <laughs> I mean, if you were to ask me the hardest thing about my job, guys, um, and I love my job, and I, I'm not fighting, so there's really nothing hard about it. Those boys and those girls and ladies are the, you know, the toughest people in the world. Um, it's the travel. The travel is, there's nothing healthy about being on an airplane. I don't care what you say. Yeah, you can be yeah. first class Virgin Air or Korean Air or, or coach on Lufthansa. Bottom line is there's nothing healthy about being on an airplane and I've got to train and stay in shape just to fly and be ready to perform the way I do. And I'm just the announcer. Imagine what the fighters go through. Yeah, exactly. Especially weight cutting, yeah. I can mm. imagine, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, have, a, have a fantastic time at this Vito Hendo. We can't wait for this yes, fight. Yeah, so it's, oh, love them guys. Lots so of can't wait. To be answered. Yeah.
can't wait. Uh, Bruce, we'll let you go. We know you're a busy man. Uh, obviously, if you don't mind, stay on at the end and we'll have a little quick chat over at the end for a minute and then we'll let you get going if that's okay. That's fine. If you could pour me a Guinness, I'll take that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay.